When it comes to finishing our model tanks and vehicles, we don't think twice about weathering them with a variety of popular finishing techniques. But what about our figures? Are there techniques we can carry over to our figure painting from the world of weathered armour? The answer is yes. Firstly, we should say that we're not figure modellers, but we find it fun to transfer techniques from one discipline to another and we love to experiment with new subject areas, like figure busts. So this time, we'll use the Young Miniatures World War I British Infantryman from the Somme 1916, a bust that featured in one of our review videos. It's an excellent quality resin creation in one-tenth scale. It was easy to put together, is full of character, and is superbly detailed. What's more, the subject matter of the Great War gives plenty of scope for weathering. The figure was first prepared for painting. This involved priming the parts using black Vallejo surface primer, then painting the face. For this, we turned to the Vallejo Acrylics face painting set. We simply followed the step-by-step -step method in the enclosed leaflet. Here you can see the face come to life using repeated semi-translucent coats of highly diluted paint from the set, aiming for a contrast between highlights and shadows. For the uniform we used Life Colour Acrylics from their US Uniform and Hemp, Rope and Tarp sets. Again, aiming to show highlights on the folds and shadows in the creases through repeated applications of semi-opaque shades. We used a dark wash, known as a pin wash, to highlight the shadows around details. It adds to the three-dimensional effect, making the details stand proud of their background. Now it's time to hint at the environment our soldier finds himself in. In a famously trench-bound war, mud needs to feature. So we mixed up a special mud splatter mix. We used wilder brown mud splatter and then stippled it on with an airbrush at low pressure to get faint dried mud spots. We repeat with wilder grey dirt splatter. And just like on a vehicle, we gave the whole figure a more muted dusty tone with an overspray of mud and dust, using humble enamel, number 98, chocolate. Afterwards we reached for wilder dark brown mud stone texture effect. Next we sprayed it through a heavily laden brush to get a flicked mud technique, projecting gentle splashes and splatters of mud on our subject. We applied the same product to the spade, but this time by brush. This is followed with thick applications of Wilder's brown rust and ochre rust, and the piece is set aside to dry. We also used other techniques that we've frequently practiced on vehicles. We wanted to show subtle visual differences in materials. That means the helmet needed to look slightly shiny and weathered, like metal, compared to the flatter looking fabric. To do this, we used worn effects chipping fluid from AK Interactive. After applying progressively lighter coats of green over the chipping fluid, we can attack it with a wet brush. The top coat is eroded and removed, showing the brown primer below, creating a pleasing chipped metal effect. We can also add scratches for realism. We tone everything down with two wilder washes. Then, using Humbrol Metal Coat, we sprayed around the circumference and lightly burnished the polishable paint. We repeat on other metallic items. We also polished selected areas, like the top of the helmet. Then, just like with the uniform, we stippled on various mud and rust spots, and we rectified any small areas that needed retouching. The next step is to apply graphite powder to the edges of any metallic items to catch the light. For the finishing touches we apply further fine mud projections to the face and tiny nicks and cuts to his skin using a blood red shade. But to increase the realism and show a bit more of the soldier's surroundings we added traces of moisture. This was done using the speckling or stippling method with Wilder's murky water varnish. This high gloss product leaves tiny shiny dots, like raindrops, when sprayed at ultra low pressure through an airbrush. Here's the finished weathered figure bust. It all goes to show that many of the techniques we use on one type of modelling can also be successfully carried across to others. So maybe next time you'll think about painting a large scale figure 
and weathering it in new and interesting ways. Subscribe for our latest videos.